Hey everybody, Scott Dowell here. Today, I thought I'd uh, cover a problem I run into fairly often, and I'm sure you do as well, in which I have a wall uh, behind a model that is fine, but the floor is boring. So I have concrete floors in my studio, and what I want to do is I want to take the texture from the wall, and I want to put it on the floor, and then I want to make it look convincing. Uh, so there's a couple ways to approach this, but I found a pretty easy uh, way to do it. Uh, pretty easy, but it's, it's a mindset. And that is, what I want to do is take and remove Jennifer from the image so that I have a background to work with. Then I can kind of do what I'd like to do. Uh, so I thought I'd walk you through how I do that, and it's uh, not too difficult. So I'm just going to do uh, Control-J here to uh, copy the layer. And this is the one I want to remove Jennifer from. So I'm going to use Select Subject, and we're going to find her first. And it's going to do a pretty good job of, of locating her. But what I need to do is remove her from this. And I want to make sure this edge isn't really so close. Like I don't want to get some of her accidentally because it's going to create a train wreck. So I'm going to use the Select, Modify, Expand. And this allows us to add some, some pixels. So I'm going to add like, say, 10 pixels to this. And that will make sure that it's well outside of the range of her. And then I can try and use the Shift Backspace uh, shortcut for the fill dialog. You'll find I'm all about keyboard shortcuts. So that's when you're really going to know shift backspace. Very handy. Uh, so we're just going to try this and see how it goes and uh, hopefully it'll go well enough. What I want to do is get the boards without Jennifer. So that's not too shabby actually. Uh, so now we can take the uh, patch tool, which is my favorite tool for this, and just highlight the areas we want to replace the texture. Uh, so basically just take any area and replace it. Now, so we see that we have this seam down the middle here and we don't really keep that. So what we can do is we can borrow a piece of this here and then go over and borrow the seam from any other location and it should maintain it for us. So we'll do a pretty good job of faking it in there. Like this top part doesn't look like it quite matches. So let's just replace it uh, with this. Now we are gonna be doing some heavy modifying uh, of this image. So it's okay that if it's not perfect out of the gate because we're gonna find that we get exactly what we need here. I'll show you in just a second. We're gonna stretch this thing considerably. So I'm trying to line this up um, so that it looks like it's at least straight. I'm gonna disable snapping. Oops. I had to turn snapping off and I kind of threw myself off there. So I'm just gonna borrow from a part of the line that looks same, like something like this. So now this is plenty good. I don't know what this little blot is here, but we'll get to that as well. And again, anything you see that's a distraction texture-wise, you can just take it and replace it with any other texture in the scene. So the patch tools is really amazing for that. Once it's done, I can just take my marquee and create a selection of this entire thing and do Control J. That will pick and put the floor that we just made on its own layer. So now what I need to do is take and do the select again. So I should have saved it to begin with, but let's just select subject. And what we're trying to do is get it so that her feet are on their own layer. And this looks like it's fine with me. So I'm gonna save the selection just in case I need to use it again in a minute. In the meantime, let's go back to this layer here, which is our floor. We just, our, our soon to be floor. I'm gonna use control T, which is the uh, free transform tool. And I'm gonna flip this upside down. What I wanna do is first of all is align it. Uh, so the edges are at the bottom here. So they line up with the floor and the wall. And then it's gonna take the bottom and drag it all the way down like this. Uh, so it's basically just inverting it. That means that all these seams all match. And I can do right click any, anywhere inside the transform and choose perspective. And then just grab this corner and pull it out. Now, if I go and find that selection that we saved a minute ago, which is here under channels, and you can control click here. Of course, you can always go up to select, load selection, and then find it in here as well. Uh, but that's a lot of steps. I just prefer to go to channels and control click on the thumbnail. Once we have that loaded, we can hold on our alt key, uh, which will apply the mask, but apply it inverted. Uh, which means that we can now see her. Now this isn't gonna quite work with the shadows, but that's okay, that's what blending modes are for. So I'll probably go down and say something like the overlay, and it's a little dark um, because it's adding the darkness of the floor plus the darkness of the wall, uh, but we can easily rectify that with a little bit of either levels or curves. I usually prefer curves. And just make sure you clip it so you're only affecting the layer right below it, and then we can kind of increase this a bit until we're happy with it. And we should get something that looks realistic. The shadow is being maintained because we're using a blending mode. We get the texture from the wall on the floor now and all the seams line up and this looks quite believable. So pretty simple and uh, once you get used to this workflow, you can knock this out very quickly. You're somewhat at the mercy of the select subject tool and the uh, uh, smart fill working well. Uh, but typically um, they are good enough for you to be able to fix with the patch tool without a lot of fuss. And again, if you're using the transform this way and then uh, warping it in a way, it's a little bit more forgivable. 
the one thing you need to make sure you absolutely do at the end of this process is you need to recrop the image. So if I select the image and I click anywhere on it, you see that we have all this extra floor and wall hanging around here. This is adding considerably to the size of the document. So you need to make sure you use delete cropped pixels and then recrop the image. Even if you didn't change the crop, that will get rid of all that extra data out there that you're attempting to save. And you can run into significant problems, slowdowns, and of course, storage over time. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. This is one of those tips I use quite often. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, everybody. I'll catch you next time. Stay safe.